So when asking someone for advice on what ingredients you should avoid in your shampoo and conditioner, you might have heard this expression before. If it ends in cone, leave it alone referring to silicones. And silicones have received a really bad rap over the years in the hair industry. They're said to be harmful because they can build up on your hair, which weighs your hair down or makes it look flat at best. And at worst, I've even heard that they lock out moisture, which will dry your hair and make it fall out. Okay, we're gonna address these silicone claims today with science. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. We talk all about the science of style and grooming so you can become the most attractive version of yourself. If that interests you, please hit like and subscribe and join the family. Also, if you're struggling to get through your hair growth journey, come on over to the Mannered Mains Facebook community and join a bunch of like-minded men who are on the same journey as you. So this video is actually part two of a series I've been doing, going in depth and looking at the science of shampoo ingredients of uh, what's beneficial is there anything harmful and in this video we're gonna be talking about silicones and discovering what the real deal is part one I talked about surfactants and detergents like sulfates and things like that and if you want to watch that I'll link to it in the description so silicones are they safe you know, are they good or bad for you? Why are they in shampoo? What's the deal with silicones? So this video is gonna be divided up into four quick parts. Part one is what are silicones and their purpose? Part two is silicones 101. Not all cones are created equally. Part three, how do you get rid of silicone buildup? And part four, who should and should not use them. So let's start with part one. What are silicones and their purpose? So they can be found in shampoos, conditioners, leave-in conditioners, cosmetic hair oil products like serums and things like that, and hair masks. And they're in there because of their effectiveness at getting rid of frizz. So silicones are basically a stronger hybrid organic inorganic version of a hair oil, like a carrier oil, like coconut oil or olive oil. But they're actually much more effective and they function as highly effective emollients and occlusives. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, then you'll know that emollients soften your hair and add shine, and occlusives are used to seal in moisture and lock in hydration, and then lock out humidity and frizz. So silicones do both of this really, really well. So they provide slips so you can run your fingers and your brushes through your hair without tangling. They add shine, and then they help lock in moisture and lock out frizz. So this sounds really good, right? Sounds like a good thing. So what is the problem? Well, the claims being made against silicones are that they can build up in your hair if they're in too many of your products and the only way that you can supposedly remove it is to use a silicone-free shampoo that contains a sulfate. But is that actually true? Well, stick around for part three of this video and we'll discover how you can actually get rid of silicone buildup. So if you look at ingredients on conditioners, you're also gonna see cationic surfactants. These are things like cetrimonium chloride or cetrimonium bromide, and these are actually much stronger than silicones at binding to your hair. But to achieve that same slip that a silicone gives you, you might need like four to five percent of a cationic surfactant, which is really binding and could cause cationic buildup, while you only need one to two percent of the silicone. So they're used kind of as a balancing alternative as opposed to putting in too many cationic surfactants in the conditioner. And surprisingly, silicones don't build up as much as cationic surfactants do. So if you're experiencing buildup, it might might not be from a silicone, it might be from something else. But here's where it gets interesting. Some silicones build up more than others, and some actually evaporate on their own. It all comes down to chemistry. So let's move on to part two of this video, which is basically silicones 101. As with most things in chemistry, it's never black and white. In this case, the claim that all silicones cause buildup is actually false. The more accurate claim should be some silicones can build up while others dissolve, while some evaporate on their own based on the... <laughs> Whoa!
the chemistry and the ingredients used to make them. So what are the different types of silicones? And for simplicity, in this video, I'm just gonna pull up a chart and we'll divide them into three parts. We'll divide them into water soluble, water insoluble, and evaporating. So let me pull up this chart right here. So if you look at these three columns, you will see most of the types of silicones. There are many more, but I just picked the most common uh, to put on this list. So on the left, we have what's commonly referred to as the PEG silicones. Basically, since water is polar and oils are nonpolar, meaning they don't mix or dissolve in each other, water can't dissolve silicones, hence why they can build up. But with some chemistry magic and adding a polar substance like a PEG, which is polyethylene glycol, you can make this silicone now water soluble. And now this doesn't mean that they will 100% rinse out, but the PEG attached to it will significantly reduce the buildup while still allowing the silicone to perform its job. So these silicones will probably partially rinse out, partially stay on your hair to perform their occlusive magic. And one thing to pay attention to is actually the number next to PEG or PPG. So the higher the number, the more soluble it is. So anything under PEG8 is probably not very soluble. So PEG8 is when the solubility starts to kick in, but then PEG12 is more soluble than PEG8 and so on and so forth. So the higher the number, the more soluble. So then in column two, we have the water insoluble silicones, which is basically just the original version of the PEG modified silicones you see in column one. So these are silicones that will definitely bind to your hair, but they do a great job of adding slip and shine, fighting frizz, and you will actually see that I starred ammo dimethicon. So this one is supposed to be kind of like a special case silicone. It's a polymer type silicone that binds to the damaged parts of your hair, but it doesn't actually accumulate on top of itself. So it's kind of a special case. However, other silicones can build up on top of it if they're different types. So in column three, we have this special group of silicones that evaporate on their own. And you commonly see these evaporating ones mixed into products that are basically meant to help spread other ingredients through your hair. So you'll find them in things like a hair serum or leave-in conditioners. So you can like temporarily provide that detangling and slip and then spread oil or, or the product through your hair, like the, the conditioner, and then they'll basically evaporate. And and any remaining residue that might be left can easily be removed with like any shampoo. So moving on to part three of this video, let's say that you do use a silicone or you notice silicones in your hair products, like some of the ones that were on the chart. How do you get rid of the buildup? Well, there's a common belief floating around that only sulfates are strong enough to get rid of silicone buildup. Before we talk about if that's true, let's quickly cover how much silicone usage do you need to actually cause buildup? Because if it's the 15th or 20th ingredient on a conditioner, is that really gonna build up? Well, maybe in a 1994 article in the Skin Pharmacology and Physiology Journal, Rushton published an article and there were some interesting findings about silicones. The first finding was that silicones from like a two-in-one shampoo, they did accumulate on the surface of the hair, but only for the first five uses. After that, there was no more buildup. There is only so much surface on hair for silicones to bond to. They, they don't accumulate indefinitely. They'll eventually stop accumulating. And the second finding was that 90% of silicone residue was removed basically by shampooing one time with a silicone free shampoo. And the surfactants that were most effective were in fact sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, ammonium lauryl or lauryl sulfate, and surprisingly, cocomita propyl betaine, which is an amphoteric surfactant. It's not nearly as strong as a sulfate. So cocomita propyl betaine does remove silicones effectively. Also, I would say that the real buildup happens from like styling products, like your hair serums, your curl creams, your leave-in conditioners, because many of these products are actually silicone heavy. They're like the first or second ingredient. And if your shampoo and conditioner do have silicones, and then you combine that with a leave-in with more silicones, you're gonna see more buildup occur. But like the journal said, sulfates were the quickest way to get rid of silicone buildup, but they're not the only way. And you can also use milder, anionic surfactants that are combined with each other. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a chart I'll pull up showing you ingredients. On the left side, you have the strongest anionic surfactants, which are the sulfates and the sulfonates, which are not as strong as the sulfate, but they're still strong. And these will do the job on their own. But let's say that you wanna get rid of silicones while still staying sulfate free. Then you can look at any of the ingredients from the middle column, the mild anionic surfactants. You can either combine them with each other or with the amphoteric surfactants in column three. And the really good news is that most 
shampoos that are sulfate free do combine one to two surfactants so you still get a good cleanse. Yeah, you can send in the SLS if you wanna get the job done, but you don't have to. You can still remove silicone buildup without a sulfate. The important thing though is if you wanna be 100% sure that they're removed, then use a silicone-free shampoo to remove the buildup. So having silicone products as you're styling and your leave-ins and then combining that with a silicone-free shampoo, you'll be fine. Of just using the silicones to get the benefits from them and then rinsing them off. You know, like one layer of silicone is not going Going to damage your hair it's going to be really helpful in your weekly hair regimen so let's move on to finally part four of this video and that is who should avoid using silicones so i would say that if you're a guy who has super curly hair and you follow the curly girl method like to a t then that method calls for really weaning off all shampoo and not using shampoo at all and in this case silicones would be really difficult to remove so i would avoid them also if you're someone who subscribes to the never use shampoo ever like you're a no poo no shampoo type of person and you only do like conditioner washes or something like that, you'll probably want to avoid silicones as well. If you have fine and thin hair, then oils, silicones in general, any type of oil will could tend to weigh your hair down. So I'd probably avoid them. Also, if you have naturally greasy hair, you probably don't need a silicone. Also, if you just don't like how they make your hair look, if your hair feels like it's too shiny or something, don't use them. For everyone else, I would say don't worry about it. So silicone usage is less about danger, but more about preference. And it's not something to freak out about if you see them in your shampoo and conditioner, because they actually are amazing at fighting humidity and fighting frizz and preventing breakage, adding slip and shine to your hair. And they will come out easily with the majority of any silicone free shampoo. So guys, don't worry too much if you see silicones in your products. So I think we can put to rest the blanket statement. If it ends in cone, leave it alone. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Round two, I had to fix some of that writing. Didn't like what I said, just didn't flow. Didn't look good, you know? Gotta make it look good. Okay, all right, I'm done, sorry. And these are strong ones that do build up and stick to your hair, but they do a great job of adding slip. <sighs> Causes, like, I think we can put the, the, the sorry.